Welcome back to another episode of the Personal Collection. This is like week eight or nine, can't remember. And we're here with Andrew. You know him on Twitter as Big Poppy three four three. He always is going out here saying <laughs> Raphael Devers. You got to say it. Told you to load up on Raphael Devers. Home run number whatever. You heard it from him directly. So this week we're going to be talking about Raphael Devers. Now, before we talk about Devers, though, you got to talk a little bit about some of your other PCs so people see a sneak peek of future episodes. And real quick, before you go over this video, I have to thank the sponsor of this video, which is myslabs.com. Use them all the time to sell my slabbed cards. Also, a really great platform to buy as well. So if you're looking to pick up some Devers for your PC that are already graded, make sure to take out myslabs.com. And if you're trying to sell your cards for the lowest fees online, talking about only a 1% commission fee on your sales, really awesome site, and I'm glad to have them as a sponsor on the channel. Yeah, my problem is I have too many PCs. I I, uh, I love collecting, been collecting since I was a little kid, and I've got a, a big, obviously, David Ortiz collection that I'd love to show people. Pro it's got to be the best one there is. Uh, I've got a big Mookie Betts collection, both from his Red Sox days and still into his Dodger, Dodger years. Got a huge Babe Ruth collection, mainly cards. I have some of his autographs. I have an autog a couple autograph balls and I've got some autograph contracts, but a lot of cards that were made in 04, 05 and forward when Donneris and Playoff were making those crazy buttons and buttonholes and laundry tags and, and a lot of Hall of Famers, frankly. I got a lot of Bat Barrel cards, a lot of Luke Garrett cards, a lot of Ted Williams cards, uh, some of those, you know, all time greats. Um, and then I still, you know, I have a pretty good collection of Soto, a pretty good collection of Acuna, a pretty good collection of Otani. So some of these up and comers. Um, that I really enjoy and appreciate. So yeah, there's there's a fair amount we could spend some time on. Yeah, and even the the new PC which I've been seeing all over Twitter is you're getting all the black rookies as well. Love the flagship black. It's so cool. I forget how popular it was, and then trying to find them and and kind of running into a Clayton Kershaw at an Omaha card show really got me focused on it again. And, and anytime you try and build the flagship set of a player, the black typically, other than the one one is the most expensive and the most difficult to find. And so um, it, it's fun because people really love the black set and they're really, they're really sweet looking. And they made those since what, the early 2000s as well? Yep, yeah. You know, I don't know when it first started. You figure Kershaw was 2008. They were making them then. Uh, Scherzer was, oh gosh, when was Scherzer? Scherzer's 08 as well. I know, I've, yeah. I've, seen, a, I've seen a Granky in 04, which okay. the Buy It Now sold, unfortunately, because I would have bought that. So I don't know if they made them before 04 or not, but Trout has them obviously in 11. I'm trying to think if I've ever seen a Trout in person, but they pulled one at the National, didn't they? I, 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 yeah, I've seen it in person. So there's, there's this guy at the Wisconsin Dells card show and he pretty much had every parallel Trout. He had like 20 or 30 gold Trout rookies. He had, uh, um, I think it's the Hope Diamond, the one that's numbered to 60. Ooh. He had yep. a bunch of the diamond ones. Like you could tell this guy early on was on eBay. Buy, 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 buy. <laughs> just bought all the trouts and held on to them and then just showcased them over there. The other guy was at that show. You might have to actually make it out to a Wisdell show. This guy had, no he had Mookie Betts 2014. He had two or three of the plate autographs. Oh, nice. One of my favorite Ortiz cards is the 2011 Ortiz update one of one diamond card that card is badass <laughs> oh the ones where they actually embedded the diamonds into it yeah it's a one of one it's the only yeah. one of one and it's got the diamond in it oh, those those are sick i remember the online redemptions for that type of stuff i was always on the website trading wheeling and dealing i did get lucky though so the following year that they had that website i got one of the gold trouts on the site i think it's like number to 60 Ooh. or something like that or 99 um so yeah. i do have the trout die cut and it still has the plastic wrap and everything on it. I don't know if I'm eventually graded or just hold on to the PC because it's one of his first die cut cards and everything. But as nice, as I lucked out on that one. At least I got that yeah. job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was one of my big deals at the national this year. Is I I uh, was able to get a PSA 10 Trout Diamond Anniversary card. Um, I did a straight up deal: the Brady Bowman Chrome PSA 10 for the Diamond Anniversary Trout card which at the time they were worth about the same. Now that football season has started and Trout was injured all year, the, the Brady's worth a little bit more, but I expect that that ratio to, you know, the, the number of Trout PSA 10 diamond anniversary cards 
uh, is in the few hundreds, and the number of Brady, Bowman, Chromes is a little bit over a thousand. So there's far less of the diamond anniversary trouts. Oh, hundred percent. And the the one I think is the coolest out of all of them. I, I love the diamond, but that red color match yeah. from the target and how rare it is too. Because those red border ones really really chip. I mean, when we, you look throughout history, all the different uh, like colored cards, like the sixty threes or the seventy ones, and or the, even the fifty threes as well, how they chip really badly. I mean, that's kind of like that version of that for trout. And then on top of it, it's just such a little pop card because yeah. those target things were hard to come across back then. They were, you know, the, the 14 bets, I have not been able to get a black because they just don't exist. You can't find them, but I've got his PSA 10 red foil, red Walmart, blue rainbow, you know, all that stuff. So that's, that's been fun to collect as well. Absolutely. So Let's before before we talk about all these other side PCs, let's actually talk about Devers. So <laughs> you're big, you're a big Red Sox fan, but you live in Nebraska. So how did that come around? Yeah, my dad's from the East Coast. So he grew up in Philly. He's actually loved all the Philly teams except the, the Phillies. So he was a big Red Sox fan. So I grew up being a Red Sox fan because of him. And I'm a little bit older, maybe than some of you you guys watching this. Um, I was 15 in 1986. And I vividly remember, you know, they were getting ready to win the World Series. You know, you had Calvin Schiraldi on the mound to close it out. Uh, and I remember, and this is silly, but I hit, I hit record on my VHS. And this thing was huge, you know, and it would have the real cassette tapes. And I hit record because I had a date. I had a date that night. And so I go on my date. I come home. I watch the, watch the rest of the game. And I see they blow the game. It was devastating. And back, again, back then, the only way you could get – the Red Sox games, if it wasn't on national television, is you had to have one of those giant satellite dishes in your backyard. And so my dad had a giant satellite dish, and we could get all the Nesson games. And so I could watch all the Red Sox games all year. And so that's when I became a really true fan of the Sox was back in about 86. And they broke our heart, of course, back then. And uh, But, man, they had some great players. I mean, Clemens was amazing. And and, uh, and, and Mike Greenwell was my favorite player growing up, and nobody really knows who that is anymore, but he would have won the MVP the year Conseco won it when Conseco admitted to using steroids. So Greenwell was the runner-up, and I still believe Greenwell should get that award because of Conseco basically juicing up to get all those home runs. But, uh, yeah, those were fun teams. Wade Boggs was a stud back then, hit 300 every year, just incredible hitter. Jim Rice was on those teams, you know, so really fun, fun era, but they never won, you know? It was the curse, man. Your other PC caused it. Yeah. The only good news is that the Yankees were really bad then too. So at least they <laughs> weren't winning, you know? <laughs> so how did you go from pretty much watching the baseball games? Did you start collecting way before then? Or did you start collecting after watching the Red Sox game? Or how did you end up getting into cards? You know, I remember that too. My, my dad was a collector of stuff, but not really cards. But there was a, a gas station right next to his state farm office. And so he would start bringing me cards home, something to do. And so I probably started collecting in general around 1985. But I really remember the, the wood border cards of 87. So that was kind of the big, so kind of that Barry Bonds era, uh, Mark McGuire era um, was when I really started getting into it. And, and then I remember going to college in 1990 in Lincoln at the University of Nebraska. And, uh, and w the chase back then was the 1990 leaf, uh, which had a series one and a series two. And, you know, before they became popular, those were maybe, you know, 75 cents a pack or whatever they were. And I think by the time, because everybody was chasing the Albert Bell and the Frank Thomas, those were the two rookie cards. And so you would go into a store if you could find those cards and you're spending back then, you're spending 10 bucks a pack, which would probably be the equivalent of spending $75 a pack today. And so you're burning through all your, you know, college money trying to chase those cards down. So those were the big, those were the big chase cards back then. I had no idea they were that expensive. Is Larry Walker also in that set or is he? A yep. Larry Walker's in that okay. set. Griffey's got a great second year card in that set. A beautiful card. That's in fact, if you told me what's your favorite Griffey cards, cause I have a few, it is not a lot, but I mean, obviously his upper deck card, but the leaf card, from 90 is just really? incredible. I got to look it up because I'm not a huge fan of junk wax era, but I, I'm not too familiar with what the card looks like. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. I've seen this one before. Yeah. And so now the Frank Thomas drives that product, but obviously it's come down, but 
One of these days I'll pick up a sealed box of series one and series two just to have it. Yeah. I'm surprised though. Like, okay. So I haven't dove deep into the pop reports. So back then, was that more popular than some of the different Tiffany releases or what's the whole story with that? Because I feel like. Yeah. That way more popular Ryan, because nobody could get the Tiffany cards. I mean, it's not like there was 10 sets sitting in your local card shop. I don't think I, you know, there was a, a card shop in Omaha. There was two or three in Lincoln. Actually there was probably five in Omaha and three in Lincoln and nobody had them. And if they did have them, you didn't know they were, you know? So, you know, the reason they're so popular is because you, you couldn't find them. And so that's why there's so low pops. And yeah, you look back now, you say, cool. But I think maybe I saw one one time, but it, you know, your regular top set was 20 bucks and your Tiffany set was a hundred bucks. And so you, you're not back then. It's not an investment. It's just a hobby. And so you're really not, not going to buy that, you know? No, that makes a lot of sense. So, all right, you ended up getting some cards back then, and then you ended up eventually going with the modern cards in the early 2000s, or did you take a break before you started collecting again, or what's the whole story with that? So I collected through college, took me to about 92, and then I didn't collect again until the late 90s. So I missed a whole bunch of releases in there. I went to law school and I started a family, and so I just didn't have the time uh, to be doing that kind of stuff. And then got back into it uh, a little bit in the early 2000s and frankly got over into it. In fact, I got so into it, um, I ended up in 2000, now this is just bad timing all around, but in 2002, uh, almost went bankrupt buying cards. Uh, got so bad, credit card debt got so bad, I ended up selling my entire collection to the local card shop guy that bought it from me and was a good friend um, and then spent, you know, a few years getting out of that hole. Um, so that was tough because one of those cards in that collection was the, uh, was the Albert Pujols uh, Bowman Chrome Rookie Auto that I had pulled. And so that was one of the cards that got sold in that collection, along with several, I was a big Pedro Martinez fan. So a lot of those cards were in there, uh, his rookie cards, his Bowman, et cetera. But all in all, you know, I had a bunch of those Highland Mint, you know, eight by 10 piece of bat cards that had Ty Cobb and Lou Gehrig and Babe Ruth. And those were popular back then as, well as some of the, Mc, not McFarlane's, but what starting lineups. And anyway, it was a very unique collection, but it was a lot of crap. I spent a lot of crap, a lot of money opening wax and not really getting a whole lot of good stuff. Uh, and so I had to get out of it. So I missed 03 basketball. I missed, cause I would open, no. I would open tons of treasures. It, well, does treasures exist back then? I don't think it, anyway, exquisite, you know, any of those probably higher end products, I would open all of them. But I was out from 2002 to about 2008 or nine. Ouch. I mean, at least on yeah. the baseball side, you didn't miss much. There, I mean, Verlander in 05. You have Granke, ooh, either 2002 or 2004, depending who you ask. And then, well, you know, I take that back, Ryan. You know, I think I was actually, I was probably out until 2013 because I missed Trout too. Okay. Yeah. Then you had Trout 12 had Harper. Yep. I was, I was still, I was starting to get back in in 12, um, but I was, yeah, I was definitely not opening in 11. And 13 had Yelich. You had Yelich yep. and had Arenado and you have Machado in there. Right, right. So I really probably got really heavy back 15 or 16 right in that range. Wow. And I mean, I've seen your collection at the national and I'm sure it's a fraction of what you have and that blew me away. So you accumulated all that since 13. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I didn't have any cards after I sold them all in 2002. I collect, I co you know, I collect a lot of historical stuff too. Uh, that stuff I held on to, but all the cards were gone. Wow. So, okay, flash forward, either what, one or five years later, depending on if you're collecting the first Bowman, Devers cards in 14 or the rookie cards in 2018. So when did you first actually get into Rafael Devers? So I got into Raphael Devers in 2017. So that's when he's called up late in that season, ends up making the playoff roster, hits a home run against the Astros in the playoff roster. I just remember, you know, I was a Xander fan. Obviously, I was a big fan in 04, 07, 13. Um, you know, Xander made the roster in 13, pretty much took the place of Will Meadowbrooks at third base, played great. But, you know, not a lot going on with the Red Sox until 17 and 18. And uh, really just appreciated, one, he looks like he's 12. And two, he yeah. just is always happy, you know. And, and you watch him and he just, you know, ever since he's been playing regularly, 
he hits the ball about as hard as anybody. He usually leads the league in hard hit balls. So he's just, he's great and he's fun and he's happy. So it, it's a, it's a great guy to have on your team. And plus he gets called up when he's what, 22, 21. Uh, so that's really cool too. And it is from the prospect side. One of the things I look at is the age we get called up, which he was really young. I, I got into him as well. I think it was early 18 or something like that, or late 17. I can't remember, but I remember buying so many of his cards from quarter boxes because no one cared about him. They just threw him over there. Everyone focused on the bigger prospects of the year, like Acuna and Soto. Um, obviously their cards were still cheap, but I was buying quarter cards of Devers all day over the other guys. And exit velocity is a big thing. That's why I like players like Stanton who hit the line drive home runs, because you can hit the ball hard. You're going to get a lot more hits and it works out that way. And other averages as well. And Devers hits decent average compared to other power hitters, but it's kind of interesting. You're saying that he's always happy. I mean, I've watched a lot of his stuff. I don't watch it as much as you do. It's being a Boston fan. So kind of like Ernie Banks then. Yeah. You know, I have it, one of the, one of my prized possessions is I have his batting helmet from 17 that he finished the year with. So his, his, his hitting helmet and, and I used to have this great, you know, fanatics, although obviously we hear a lot about them, they're massive now and they're going to take over the world. But back then they were pretty small. And I had a guy there and back then that had a connection to Ortiz and to Devers. And so he was able to get a hold of his batting helmet and he calls me up and says, Hey, I can sell this to you. And whatever inscriptions you want, I can get. And so this batting helmet is decorated with youngest player to hit a home run in the post scene ever most rbi you know it's got all these crazy so cool. you know inscriptions and autograph and it's just a really sweet piece you got to send me a, a picture of that or a video and then i'll i'll vet it over here too so people can see it i, I will cool. see it well. yeah and well in that back then i i that was really i didn't buy much of Dever stuff i was buying all the ortiz stuff because he retired you know in that era um and he, he retired in what 16 uh, yeah, 16, he retired. And so I, that's how I made the connection with the guy at Fanatics. One of these days, I'll take some video around my office. I probably have about 15 of the jerseys that Ortiz used to hit various home runs above 500. So 505, 510, 515. And, and Ortiz was intentional. He would hit a home run, take off the jersey, send it to Fanatics, inscribe it. You know, so he's, yeah, it was crazy. We'll have, to, we'll have to do that for your David Ortiz video when we get <laughs> end up doing there. Yeah. No, so, so that was your first Devers uh, memorabilia. Was that that ba- or the the helmet? Well, I mean, memorabilia wise, he just he frankly does not have a lot of memorabilia out on the market. He's got a few jerseys here and there, a few bats here and there. They almost all go through golden auctions for whatever reason. He doesn't really have an exclusive with Fanatics anymore. Believe me, I'd have a lot more stuff because I've got a guy there, a different guy now, not not the same as I had before. And I tell him, Hey, get any Dever stuff. You need to call me. And he just, he, they just can't get it. Now, luckily last year, golden got his um, Jersey where he went six for six. And I think that might've been against the Rays. So he went six oh, for six and I was able to pick that Jersey up before he, again, he got more popular. That was probably two years ago now, maybe. Uh, that's a really awesome piece with that one. So what was your first Devers card then? So, you know, you think your viewers watching this, I mean, has there really ever been a greater year for players than, I mean, not including 1952, okay, but but a better year for cards than 2018? 2018 Series 1, Raphael Devers, Alex Verdugo, Walker Bueller, Jack Flaherty, and that that product up until, I mean, that product is still, frankly, cheap. Series 2, Shohei Otani's rookie, and then update Soto, Acuna, Otani again. I mean, just an incredible year for cards. Incredible. I'm you know, and so right 18, yeah. what would be yeah. a better year? So we're, we're, gonna, we're not going to talk about pre-war because that's a, it's a whole mess yeah. of and everything like that. I mean, so, you could argue 2011 is pretty good. Altuve, Trout, one other person in that group. Beatty Martinez. Martinez, Goldschmidt, I think, is in that group. You also have – all right, so you have those guys, Rizzo. Yeah, yeah, that's have, true. Oh man, they have a few other guys. I'm trying to think real quick. Chris Sale. Yeah. And who? Yeah, else? so really good, but not and, not not crazy like Acuna, Soto, Otani. You know, I'd say 2011 is probably in at least in recent years. You'd probably have 2018 one, then you'd have 2011. These last few years have been okay. Yeah. 13 was decent, but obviously not to the level as those. 
Okay. I'm trying to think 14 was good, but just not enough players before then the closest it might be 2008. I mean, obviously not everyone pans out the whole group won't pan out, but you have Scherzer, you have Kershaw, you have Vado, you have Longoria was, I think there was another guy in 08, but didn't fully pan out to Hall of Fame of career. Um, hold so on. three of those guys will be Hall of Famers. If Botto's in, Scherzer's in, Clay Sh- Kershaw's in. Who's the last guy you said that's probably not in? Longoria. Longoria. I, I don't think he's in yet. No, he, he's he's going to be a very borderline type player if he's going to make yeah. it. I'm trying to think of the last guy who was in 08. There's another player, but I can't think who it is. What year, uh, what year is Buster Posey? Oh. Uh, Posey's 2010. It's David okay. Wright, I think. Oh, sure. David He'll Wright, be in. or did he have prospect cards before then? Maybe not. I might be wrong. Okay. When was Verlander? Verlander's 05. Yeah, David Wright okay. has a lot of earlier cards. I was way off. Yeah. I know there's another yeah. guy though. I can't. I can't remember it. Someone's gonna have to put it down in the description down below. Yeah, and, and granted, maybe some of these guys in 18 don't end up working out. But man, what what a what a solid year and. You know, my favorite story from 18, 18 was right before the market started moving pretty aggressively. 19 is when it started. And 18, Black Friday, blowout cards is selling jumbo cases of tops, 2018 tops update for like 450. And so I still have two sealed jumbo cases and a sealed hobby case because I think I bought like 10, you know, back then because I really like those guys, you know. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, it, it, I mean, it was ridiculous. And now those things are what, 12 grand, something crazy like that. I, I have no idea. I don't pay attention to wax at all because yeah. I'm a singles guy than ripping. And I know there's a great investment with sealed wax, especially from breakers that want to buy it to open up the people. And there's a whole other yeah. market for it, but I don't pay attention to any of that. I'm always, all right, what's the rookie card going for? What are these other variations? That's what I focus on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that, boy, I tell you, that was great stuff. I mean, that's, yeah, whenever, like I look at, I still see the price of up 2020 update tops, which I think they still want $800 for. It is the worst product ever made. I mean, it's awful. There's no rookies in it. It's awful. <laughs> I, I was so disappointed. We were talking about it, how they put the 21 rookies into there. It just, yeah. you have to have, you have to have the players in there just because of the high numbers. I mean, throughout right. the history, you have people like Tom Seaver, high number rookie card, and it's iconic. You have Trout, yeah. who's an update rookie card. And it, I, there's a there's a ton out there. I just wanted to highlight those two. But it's like some of the best cards that have ever been produced are players that get called up late in the year because those are the players that teams want to do their service agreement. Kind of bending the rules, we can say. They're following it. It's 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 a gray area. Um, but they'll call yeah. them up right before the playoffs, get them a little bit of cup of tea before they come up the next year. Right. And what a, the other thing I love about Update, Update is the only version of Tops in a given year where they have the the signed auto versions of the rookie cards. So, you know, if you think about there's an Acuna and, and there's usually the SP and the SSP that, that they have 10 copies of each of those signed. So the sticker autos. Yep. Um, yeah, crazy they're crazy too. And you never see them. It's like, it's like pulling the clear. You never see them. You know, they just don't exist. Uh, can, but those autograph versions are nuts. I, I, I can't imagine. Yeah. They're just so, they're so expensive. I don't even watch them on eBay. It's all right. I can't, I'll, I'll let someone else buy it. I like, mean, 19 may end up being good. I mean, you've got, you've got Vladdy, you got Tatis. I mean, those, yeah. those guys, those guys are monsters. And there's a few other, obviously there's a few other people in those classes that people were collecting, but, um, but a lot of those guys probably aren't, I mean, Carter Keyboom, is he going to pan out? Michael Chavis, is he going to pan yeah. out? You know, probably not. Yeah. And pitching wise, it's been weak the last few years. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's decent pitching, yeah. but the problem is you get called up like 24, 25. You're not going to accumulate the stats as these other guys. Right. Money. And it's it's weird. Like pitching goes through cycles. You'll have years like 18 where you get a bunch of different pitchers. I mean, it's headlined by Bueller and Flaherty. You still have Max Fried in there. Uh, obviously, yep. you both have Kershaw and Scherzer, but then you have these dry runs like four or five years in a row where you have nothing. Right. And pitchers are so tough. I mean, unless they're Scherzer or Kershaw or Verlander, they just don't have a market. They just don't. It's one thing I think hopefully will end up changing. I have my own beliefs on why that ended up happening. I personally believe it's all down to steroids and the home runs. People love the home runs. And during that generation, people didn't buy into your Randy Johnson's or Greg Maddox's. I mean, if you look at their advanced stats, if you look at, I mean, not even advanced stats, but just strikeouts, their, their shutouts, 
wins, like everything that they've done their entire career. These guys are top 10, top 15 pitchers of all time, but they don't get yep. the hobby respect. And even if you look at other, like, it, it makes no sense to me. I think, I, at least I hope one day that things would change. I mean, the, the price difference between the Griffey upper deck and the Randy Johnson upper deck boggles my mind. And I get Griffey's number one, he's an icon, but Randy Johnson, just based off of even like war, was a better player. Yeah. 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 Top five left handed pitcher, probably top two. Yeah. Frankly. Yeah. I mean, you'd have, uh, what's his name? Play for the Braves. Warren Spawn probably is number one. And then Randy, probably Lefty Grove is there as well. So probably top five for sure, top three. But wasn't still, uh, wasn't Walter Johnson a left-handed pitcher? Walter Johnson was right-handed. Okay. I think. Okay. So Grove yeah, you're, you're, you're Randy's got to be close. Spawn's got to be close. Yeah. Yeah. Lefty Grove. I mean, he he was good for a while. He didn't have the longevity that he didn't have the good longevity that Randy did. But yeah. He had nine ERA titles though, and that era of yeah. the '30s with how good those players were. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, we think about that era as everybody was really good. There were three or four really, really good players. I'm not sure the whole league was good. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can see that point. So yeah. let's talk about some of those Devers cards that you have. I'm excited to see them. Guys, if you're watching this, you're going to see some crazy stuff right now because these are the best of the best Devers cards out there, I promise you. Yeah, so back to that question. So Devers, I started picking up his stuff in 17. So I went back and got his uh, 14 first Bowman, first Bowman's and then 15 was his first Bowman auto. So here's the sad, here's a sad story about my Devers collection. So in Omaha at the Omaha sports card shop, a guy pulled the super base first Bowman. He sells it to me. He sells it to me. I grade it. It grades a 10. So it's a Beckett 10, not a black label, but a 10. So I take it to the national in 18 and I have it in my case. Um, and I wasn't, you know, I wasn't crazy Devers then I was, I, I liked him, but I wasn't like I am now. And so a guy comes to my table and I end up trading it. Uh, now it was part of a trade where I got three PSA 10 Tom Brady Bowman chromes and three Tom Brady Bowman tens. So, you know, it works out value wise, but man, that is a sad, sad you, story. You know who has it? No, I don't. I haven't. No, I don't know. So <laughs> you gotta have a sign. Like I want your Devers and then. Yeah, no, no doubt. So, <laughs> so anyway, that, that was it. So in 17, I start going back and try to get the Bowman. So, um, we'll start there. So his, I'm sorry, his 15 Bowman. Yeah, 15 Bowman. So this is his rookie auto. Okay. And that is a 10-10. So there are very few 10-10 Devers first Bowman auto. And so that's that one. And then you've got his base, 9-5-10. So I'm trying to get the lighting there. How's that? Perfect. Good. Okay. Then you got his refractor. And then you've got his purple. Okay. And then you've got his blue. And then you've got his green. So I don't have the orange and I don't have the red. And obviously I did not buy out collectibles 101 for $80,000. So um, do you know my collectible story on that, by the way, when they sold that card? I, I saw that they came to you and you're like, reject the offer or something like that. Yeah. And rejected yeah. it. And then they got more money for it. Yep. That's exactly right. Okay. So that was the story. So what happened? Yeah. They, they, they had a buyout offer for let's say 28,000. And I went on Twitter. I said, do not accept this. This is ridiculous. And then they got another offer for 49 and then they got another offer for 78. And, uh, and that's when I said, okay, now it's at a price it should be. And then collectible came to me and said, we want you to make the announcement. So that was fun. That's perfect. Yeah, I mean, a lot that of was fun. Money, so, yeah, I was gonna. I asked them if they're gonna give me a cut, but they they said no. Although wow. I made, I you know, I was when his when his collectible came out when they started auctioning it, I probably bought because that card was started off at like eight dollars a share, probably fell down to four four fifty. So I had a fair amount of ownership in it because I was buying it down at four fifty. 
Um, I just should have bought more, but oh well, that's life. All right, so then uh, these are probably my favorite, one of my favorites of his. So uh, Dynasty comes out, of course, and Devers is in that 2018 set. So this is really awesome. This is a Futures game one-on-one ball. So Devers played in the 2017 Futures game. And so this is a true, you know, it's got the rookie card logo on the back. This yep. is a ball from the game. Uh, he signed on the side. It's the sweet spot of the ball with the, you know, so Matt Saltzman, I really like this one because it's a gamer, you know, and it's got his autograph on the side of his rookie 101. And then this is great because this is also out of Dynasty. This is the laundry tag off of a three-run home run jersey that he used. So it's got the MLB logo on it that traces it to the game. It's the got the rookie card logo on it. So that's really neat. And then, of course, his 101 rookie logoman out of Dynasty uh, as well. So. Uh, I used to love, I love Dynasty as a set. It's gotten so far out of whack on price. It's just not worth breaking. Like 500 um, a box, right? Well, they're going to be, the, the ones coming out here this year are going to be 700 a box. Yeah. So it's just, so sometimes, you know, it depends on who's in the set. Sometimes I'll join a break, but most of the time I don't even do that now. I just buy the singles that I want. Yeah. You uh, so that's, that. I mean, that's I, picked right. up, I picked up the Devers Dynasty if, years ago i think for like 100 bucks i have one of them yeah 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 they're ten, just it's like you can't very inexpensive now this is a fairly recent pickup i love the black label cards if i can find them so i did end up finding his rookie chrome black uh the tops flagship chrome black label uh so that you know that that was you know it wasn't crazy expensive but it wasn't cheap you know because it was bought this year so his stuff has been pretty good now is that a pop the other set Yep, that's a, uh, no, I don't think it's a pop one, but I don't, I don't remember what it's at. It, it can't be more than a pop three, somewhere in that range. Now, another set I love is Allen and Ginter. Um, and so this is the PSA 9 101 from the Topps Ginter X product, is that which metal? might have been, might have been, it's silver, might have been the first year they did the X set. So there's that one. And then here's the red. So that's hand number to five. Okay. And then out of the base Ginter set that year, the rookie year, this should be a pop one. Again, I haven't looked recently, but this is the red auto out of 10, 10, 10. Can you move that a little bit? It's a little shiny. There you go. There you go. So the red auto 10, 10, um, out of 10, 10, 10. So that's uh love that set. I have a lot of Ginter cards. Um, a lot of Ginter cards. Holy cow. That's a great set. Cause I, I love the crossover. I love them bringing in the other athletes from the different sports. That's really cool. And the historical figures too. Exactly. Exactly. Another one one I have that I love is the, the silver pack super of Devers. So that's the auto super. So you see that? Okay. Yep. There we go. Perfect. Right there. Yep. So that's a crazy card. And again, obviously didn't pull it, but Got the nine on it, but uh, because the centering was off, because everything else is a nine five, the centering's an eight five. Oh. So, yeah, I know that's a bummer. Now, the probably the most valuable Devers card I have um, would be the Sapphire Super beautiful. Ten. So, just a beautiful card. Um, it would be interesting what his 101 super sapphire auto would go for i have no idea really what this card would go for i would think if his bowman chrome 101 super goes for 80 you would think this could touch five but hard to predict you know doesn't matter i mean that's not something i would sell you unless i was going back if it's been pulled or not i don't i've never seen it man imagine it's uh, in those boxes that someone's hoarding yeah, it's just a beautiful card. Just the supers obviously are beautiful, but so that's just a beautiful card. Love that card. Um, of course, I have to have this one. This is the uh, this is the eighteen stadium dual Ortiz Dever super. If I can, there we go. Yep, crossover for your PC right there. That's right. That's right. Exactly. Here's the transcendent one of two. There's two rookie patch autos like this i picked up one at the national this is the other one uh and that's the nine five and it's ten on the back 
Um, I think, you know, I think transcendent is going to become more valuable over the years. Uh, obviously it's expensive, but the cards, the base cards from those sets are not as valuable as they should be. I think eventually they will be, I think they will be, they should get about as coveted as, as Sapphire does. So hopefully they will, but does Devers have a base in that set? Oh yeah. He does. Yep. Yeah. He's got a base. Plus he's got, I think two or three different base rookie autos and then the two one-on-one rookie patch autos. So, all right. So then flagship, um, so flagship tops, 2018. So I'll go through this here. So you got his base. Okay. Yep. One of the bigger bargains in baseball right now, you could probably pick this up for about 50 bucks PSA 10 of, of a 24 year old player who has the all time record in baseball for home runs in the postseason under 25 RBIs in the postseason under 25. He's third all time total bases in the playoffs um, of all time. Okay. So, or not all time, but of Red Sox history. So Ortiz, Kike, because he's having a ridiculous series, and then Devers. Uh, up until Juan Soto, he was the youngest player in history to hit a home run in the playoffs. Uh, he's got over a home under, over a hundred home runs already at the age of 24. Um, so remarkable career. So then you've got rainbow foil. Yep. And, you know, I'm really good friends with Brent from Breck and Brent and Becca. Um, and he will tell you, if you talk to him that the rainbow foil is probably a thousand, there's probably a thousand rainbow foils in each set, you know, give or take, which means it's, twice as rare as the gold but the gold is far more valuable so there's the gold um i probably have i don't know what the pop is on the rainbow foils i probably have 10 of, them, of him as 10 and then i probably got 10 of the golds too as psa 10s um, or just any grade on the rainbow foils i probably have 10 psa 10s on the golds i probably have five tens and five nine five somewhere in that range yep and then you've got the Independence Day. I love Beautiful that one, man. Yeah. My favorite. And those are, of course, out of 76. Then you've got Mother's Day, which are out of 50. And Father's Day, which are out of 50. And at this level, it's nice to have tens, but they're so rare, you almost take any grade you can find, you know, just so you can build the set because you just can't, can't find them. You know, they're, and then you've got, vintage which is out of 99 one. and then unfortunately they don't make these anymore for the for the tops base sets anymore but the negatives which i i think are so cool and they don't make them anymore for whatever reason they make them in the chrome but they stop making them in the paper aren't those like ssps or something like that with how rare so they're they out of 50 even though they're not numbered there are 50 copies of them right and then you got the black so we know about the black of course and I picked this up at the national this year. So was, I had a, I have a PSA that near your nine booth? and I have a PSA eight, but I didn't have a nine five. What's that? Was the nine five near your booth? I think I remember yep. seeing that. Yep. Yep. That's right. And then an, another one that's tough is the foil board. So this comes out of the set and then the chase inside of the sets is the foil. So there's, all, there's less than 200 of those, you know? And then you've got the SP, right? Yep. I unfortunately do not have the SSP. Really? If you can believe it. Yes. Yep. Unfortunately. And then you've got the retail complete set. And you've got the holiday. And the metallic holiday. <laughs> and the complete set all-star game edition. Yeah. And then finally, the Toys R Us purple. That's a tough one. Yep. And they don't, you know, there, there are no red foils or Walmart blues. They don't exist for this set. And so that's, so really other than the clear out of 10, the 101, which I have seen the 101, I tried to win the 101. I think I lost after it crossed 2000, 2000 bucks. That was two years ago. So I regret that. And then, um, so the one one the SSP, and the clear. I've never, ever seen a clear. Never. Don't know, don't know if they exist. I assume they exist. I don't know. 
That's gonna be one of those that you find at a card show one day. Just it pops up and you're like, all right. Bye. I know it. Now I love Heritage. So that's one of the few 1010 Heritage rookie autos. I don't know what the pop is. I think I have two. And then I, I couldn't get it quick enough for this video, but I do have the red PSA 10 as well. The red ink. Those are cool, cool. Um, on that card. And then finally, two other sets. So now we get into, these aren't graded because I, uh, all of these were redemptions. And so I bought the redemptions. I just haven't mailed them in. So now the top's chrome. So you got orange and you got gold and you got gold wave and you got green and you got blue and blue wave and purple. Okay. I, I have the base. I just didn't grab it. Then, then they did a Chrome update, red, orange, orange, gold, gold, prism, prism. That's insane. <laughs> so I need to get, you know, when grading settles down, I'll, I'll send these in to get them graded. And then I didn't, didn't pull my sapphires, but I do have, I do have the auto sapphire red and the auto sapphire blue and the auto sapphire orange. That's part of the collection. <laughs> that's, that's insane. I think I have, uh, I think I have five or six two row boxes of Devers. And I know you have that also that optic rainbow, right? Or is it, yeah, rated rookies that you picked up? I do. It's the Raffi big stick out of optic. I have everything but the one to seven. Okay. So the always the seven, like a cracked ice or something like that. Yep. Cracked ice. And of course it was because of my, my crew who goes by Rory, Rory McElroy number one or something on Twitter, but he accumulated it. I already had the one one from a couple of years ago. And uh, he was never going to get it from me. So he eventually <laughs> capitulated and sold me his set. I saw how many times he tagged you. He was like, yeah, please sell me this. Please sell me this. Please sell me this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I so, saw him, you know, he built I, that so fast, man. I was, I was impressed. Yeah. So the, the, the cards I don't have that, that I want, I don't have the orange or the red autos of his Bowman Chrome autos. I don't have those there and they're, they're so crazy priced. It's, I don't know if I ever will, frankly, um, or at least not in the near term. So, orange, so the orange. red, the orange and the gold, but on, you know, the Mookie, I have the yeah. Mookie auto gold, the Bowman Chrome. Really? Yeah. They make an orange also in 14 or. Yeah, I think they did. Yep. And then probably red as well then. Yeah. But they didn't make any of the waves, you know, those weren't, those yep. weren't popular yet. Now they have like I think like three or four new refractors that they're throwing in the last two years. I, I don't even keep track of it anymore. There's just so many. Well, Tops has a lot, but nobody's worse than Panini when it comes to versions. Oh my <laughs> god. There's like 65 different prism versions now. There's 65 of those. It, either either in select or optic or prism. It's it's really out of control. I just don't I don't get how you do the rainbow with 65. You don't, you can't. Yeah. Because a part of that is there's probably 10 one of ones So you can't possibly do it. There's 10 one of ones too? Yeah, so I think in the one I saw, the 65 in one of those sets, I think there was 10 one of ones <laughs> Man. <laughs> I, I still can't believe what these low-numbered things are going for. Like I saw Brady with number to 10 went for like 20, 30 grand or something like that. Just number right. to 10. And then you look at baseball, yeah. it's like if there's a trout number to 10, or well, let's just say like a trout number to 25, it's not going for 20 or 30 grand. It's going for a couple hundred dollars. That's right. It's an insane market. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's so Devers just is, isn't getting the love that he should. Although, you know, it's not too bad. It's just, you, you would think, um, you know, he, people can't compare him to Soto and Acuna, but, but also we'll see what Soto and Acuna look like when they're 24, what their numbers look like, what kind of success they've had in the playoffs. I'm worried that Soto's going to be stuck on a last place team here for a while. He's going to get, he'll still be great. He'll still get a lot of love, but you know, he'll have the trout effect, right? He'll, he just won't be on good teams, but difference for him. He's got a world series. Yep. And on top of that, he's going to be a free agent pretty young too. Cause he got caught up. Well, in. there's just no way they're not going to lock him up. If they have the money. I mean, he has what Scott Boris is a client or a, as a, uh, I think he has Scott Boris, right? I don't know. I mean, it's, you know, you, you can make the contract so long, you might as well just pay them, you know? <laughs> I mean, they're known for their deferments too. They'll go out yeah, there. Exactly. Here's $500 million, 
but this is until you're age 90. Yeah. The, you know, Nationals problem is they don't have a farm. They don't have much of a farm system They're They got a problem. They trade away a lot of their talent too. Yep. I mean, they got some good players from that trade. Uh, they, I mean, they got Kyber Reese who should be their long-term catcher. Uh, and they got a couple of pitchers, but they, they've got a long way to go in that farm system. They do. So any closing thoughts on Devers that people should know about? Well, I, I think what I encourage people to do, you know, you try to, I mean, some of this is, you know, I, I collect him because I, I really appreciate him. I love that team. I love him. Um, but in the long term, if, you know, I decide to retire and my kids aren't into this, I'll probably, I do look at it as somewhat of an investment in the future. And so you look at some of your current players that you think are going to be long-term great and have the chance to be Hall of Famers. And Devers is on the short list. I mean, he's proven it. He's not injury prone. He's not been out with injuries for any significant time. He's been in the playoffs, I think, three of the five years. He's got two. He's got a World Series behind him. Um, he's got a silver slugger now. Uh, he's probably, this is going to be his second time being a top 10 MVP candidate. And he's just a great player. And what we all, I think, love as collectors is people who enjoy playing the game that aren't a pain in the ass, that aren't angry at fans. You know, he just loves playing baseball. So the only thing that really, to me, makes, makes it potentially frustrating is if they do with him what they did with Betts. Uh, at least Betts went to a great team. And so, and, and it wasn't the Red Sox fault they couldn't sign him. Uh, whereas bet, you know, I think they need to lock, lock up Raffy, you know, they need to give him a long-term deal and hopefully hold on to him. He's just uh, he's just a franchise player. And, and, uh, and you can still get in early on him. You can still get his Bowman Chrome rookie auto nine, five, 10 for $325, which is insane. Look at how much Bobby Witt costs. I mean, it's, it's, come on. It's, it's cheaper than all these prospects. Yeah. I mean, so if you, if, if you're kind of, you know, if you're kind of new to collecting, you say, all right, I need to build somewhat of a card portfolio. I mean, he's an easy one. I can get his base rookie for 50 bucks. I can get his Bowman Chrome auto for 300. If he ends up being a hall of famer, you know, what are those cards worth? They're worth a lot, yeah. but I don't collect Devers to invest in him. I just tell people to buy him because he's a good investment. Yes. I mean, yeah. great team. Young has already a lot of stats behind him. So there's a reason why yeah. we're collecting him. Obviously I don't yeah. have your PC, but <laughs> Right. But I also like Mr. Soto. And so there's a new pickup this week. So is that's that his Gypsy auto? Queen. Nobody, nobody gets real excited about Gypsy Queen, but what the subset of Gypsy Queen I love, the bazooka back. Oh, that's cool. So the bazooka backs are always out of 25, the auto versions. So Gypsy Queen, always on card, always good picture. And the bazooka backs are impossible because they're out of 25. So to get a Juan Soto bazooka back for under 300 bucks, I think is a steal. No brainer. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you, Andrew. If you guys want to check out Andrew's Twitter is big poppy 34 three posts all the time about Devers and his other PCs as well. A great follow on there. So make sure to check them out. Thanks, Ryan. Great to talk to you.